Hi, this is Mr. Baker, and this is your Unit 5 Photosynthesis Audio Presentation. We are going to be talking about how organisms obtain energy, and the main idea is that all living organisms use energy to carry out all their biological processes. You will need to know that energy is the ability to do work or produce heat, and energy comes in two forms. Kinetic energy, which is energy that is in moving or in motion, and potential energy, which is possible energy. The example is the rock sitting at top of a hill that's got potential energy. When somebody pushes it, then it's got kinetic energy. Transformation of energy, you're using energy even when you don't even know it. When you're sleeping, your brain is still active, your heart is still pumping, you're still breathing. How do you do that? Well, what we learned last unit, cellular respiration, broken into the anaerobic and aerobic phases of glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and ETS. And don't forget, energy is the ability to do work or produce heat. All energy obeys the laws of thermodynamics, and there appear to be four of them, but you only need to worry about the first and the second. The first law of thermodynamics is the conservation of energy. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, just converted from one form to another. The second law says that disorder always increases, and that disorder gets a fancy term of entropy. You will need to know the difference between an autotroph and a heterotroph. Nearly all the energy for life comes from our sun in some way, shape, or form. Troph is from the Greek trophos, which means nourishment. So autotrophs nourish themselves. They make their own food. Chemoautotrophs use chemicals or inorganic substances. A great example is hydrogen sulfide, and those can be found at the vents at the bottom of the ocean. Photoautotrophs use sunlight as their source of energy. You and I are heterotrophs. We need to ingest food to obtain energy. And we dug up and found that there is another term called a mixotroph that do both, like the Venus flytrap. There is a video on autotrophs and heterotrophs that you can watch. And that takes us to metabolism. It's all the chemical reactions in a cell. And you can have a pathway, a series of reactions where the products of one become the reactants of another, step one, step two, step three, which is what you learned, like, say, in the electron transport system. Those meta metabolic processes come in two forms. You're either going to break stuff down or you're going to build it back up. If you break it down, you're catabolic, and catabolic reactions release energy. If you're anabolic, when you build things up, you're going to absorb or store energy. Remember ATP? When you break off a phosphate to release energy, that's catabolic. When we recharge it, that's anabolic, and you're storing energy. Photosynthesis is an anabolic process where we're building a molecule of glucose. Well, we're not. Plants are. And we're going to take light and convert it into chemical energy. The equation is 6 co 2 plus 6 H2Os is going to yield us a, a glucose and some oxygen as a byproduct. Don't forget about ATP because that's the core of this whole process. And as you've learned, ATP, we've been calling it a fully charged battery with three phosphates because it's triphosphate. ADP is a partially charged battery with two phosphates, diphosphate. To understand how plants work, you need to understand the structure of a leaf. The leaf has three layers, an epidermis, a mesophyll, and a, another layer of epidermis. The epidermis secretes a cuticle, it's a waxy protective covering, and they also have these little stomata, which are football-shaped openings that let water out, water vapor out, and carbon dioxide in, in and oxygen out. Pavement cells are the epidermal cells that cover the top of the leaf, and they look like jigsaw puzzle pieces, and they have protective hairs called trichomes, which is the Greek word for hair, and they have various veins. Those veins carry nutrients. Here's a picture of one that we took in my AP Bio class a few years ago. You can see the trichomes pointed to by the red arrows. The stomata uh, are the football shape with the blue arrows, and the pavement cells, which are the jigsaw puzzle piece looking things. And here's another picture where you can see the vein running through the middle there. That takes us to the middle of the leaf, the mesophyll. Meso meaning middle, fill means leaf. And there are two layers here, the palisade and the spongy. The palisade are tightly packed cells that look like columns, or they're columnar. And they are important in the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis. More about those later. 
the spongy mesophyll are loosely arranged, and those are important the light independent, or something called the Calvin cycle. The palisade mesophyll, chloroplasts are packed full, and they all want the sun. <laughs>